Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Ella and right here with me I've got the gold M1 MacBook Air. I've been playing around with this device for the last few days and I am very impressed with it so far. I am actually currently a computer science student and while originally I didn't get this laptop for computer science, I started to think about whether this laptop would be a good choice for comp sci students or not. So in this video, let's talk about that. Hey guys, editing me here, and before we start, I just want to put out a quick disclaimer. So in this video, I really only cover what I consider as universal concerns that pretty much all comp sci students will have. Of course, you may have additional applications that you are concerned about, but unfortunately, it would be pretty much impossible for me to cover everything. So please keep in mind that this video might not be comprehensive for your decision making, but I do hope that it will help in your decision making. Alright, so first let's talk about the overall performance of this laptop, and it's very good. Even though it is an Air product, which is relatively the most affordable laptop from Apple, this laptop is definitely very fast and powerful. So I actually ran some benchmarks on this device. The CPU benchmark score of this device actually beat my Intel MacBook Pro 16 inch right here. And let me tell you guys, this laptop is very highly specced and cost nearly actually no, more than three times as much as this M1 laptop. Also, as for the Octane score, which measures overall web responsiveness, so like how fast your browser runs, it was almost the same as my MacBook Pro. So there is no doubt that this laptop is a mini beast. And probably the best thing is that it is silent, like there's no fan in this laptop, it is completely silent and I find myself enjoying the silence so much because my MacBook Pro 16 inch can get really loud sometimes. So the overall silent design of this M1 laptop is definitely a huge bonus for me. All right, so now we know that this laptop is very fast, very powerful, but what about app support? Because after all, ARM is a brand new architecture for MacBooks and we really can't be too sure about the performance of non-native applications. So I just decided to test out some very popular IDEs because as a CS student, you are probably going to be coding. So first, let's talk about two very popular IDEs, PyCharm and VS Code. Right now, neither of them are native ARM applications, which means that they have to run through an emulator called Rosetta. Okay, so I pulled up some old Python programs that I had written in PyCharm and they compiled almost instantaneously. Now, granted, these were pretty small programs, but judging from what I see, there is no problem with compilation in PyCharm. And I also pulled up some of my old web development projects in VS Code just to see if there would be any issues with the application and there were none. VS Code ran very smooth, no problems whatsoever there. Okay, so I would say for like regular class assignments, you'll be able to complete them with no issues in either PyCharm, VS Code, IntelliJ, or some other like basic IDE. And also if you want to do some web development, you'll have no problem with that either. Web development doesn't really have any like CPU or GPU requirements. Instead, what you will need are Chrome and Safari, and actually both of them are native ARM applications. So you will have no problem testing out your web development code in Chrome and Safari. All right, and moving on, let's talk about Xcode, which is used to develop iOS apps. Xcode is made by Apple, so it is obviously a native ARM application. And I actually didn't test out Xcode myself because I have zero experience with that. But instead, I found a very good video by the YouTuber Dave2D. I will have his video linked down below so you can go check out his video if you want to. But he provided a summary of Xcode build times and it is pretty shocking. So as you guys can see, the M1 MacBook Air has a fresh build time of 45 seconds and an incremental build time of 16 seconds. Notice how this speeds out every single Intel MacBook, including the very highly spec MacBook Pro 16 inch and the iMac Pro, both with 32 gigs of RAM. That is pretty insane. Like when I first saw this, I was like, wow, like Xcode is really good on M1. So obviously the M1 laptop would be a fantastic choice for iOS development. Okay, so we just talked about iOS development, so obviously next we have to talk about Android development. And I downloaded Android Studio, which is used to develop 
Android apps. Currently, Android Studio is not a native ARM application. So I just tried to run a sample application and almost immediately I ran into problems because I noticed that I cannot fire up a virtual device in Android Studio and that issue was caused by the CPU not being able to support it. Now I could connect my Android phone to my laptop and run the app on my phone but this will not work if you have an iPhone. So basically Android Studio would be usable for you on the M1 laptop if you have an Android phone. If you have an iPhone, then you won't be able to use Android Studio unless you're a genius and you don't need to test out your code at all. Also, the very first time that Android Studio tried building this app, it took four minutes and 25 seconds, which is way too long. So I got a little bit worried, but then I found that afterwards, from the second time on, building the app was a lot faster and only took a few seconds. Okay, and the very last thing that I'm going to touch on is machine learning. So as for taking machine learning courses at your university, most likely there won't be a requirement for the CPU and GPU. So this laptop will probably be able to get you through machine learning courses at your university. Now machine learning research is a whole other story because that will require training algorithms and you will not be able to train any machine learning algorithms on this laptop or really any other laptops because training algorithms takes tremendous power. And most likely if you are to train machine learning algorithms, you will do so through a server of some sort. So yeah, those are my comments about machine learning. Okay, so basically most IDEs will perform great on the M1. Xcode especially will be fantastic. The only issue that I've discovered so far is just Android Studio not being able to fire up a virtual device. But yeah, that's pretty much it about IDEs. So now let's move on and talk about monitor support because a downside of the MacBook Air is that it can only drive one monitor at a time. So if you're someone who likes to work with like two monitors or maybe even three monitors, then this is definitely an issue that you should consider. And now going back to application support, as a CS student, you might have some classes that require you to download some special niche software. For me, this year I am taking a computer organization class, so it's a more hardware-based class. And for this class, I had to download a program called Logism. This is a pretty niche program that just builds like virtual circuits. But I actually found that I could not download Logism on this M1 MacBook Air, but I also could not download Logism on my MacBook Pro either. So I knew that this wasn't an M1 specific issue. However, on my MacBook Pro, I have the option to boot camp into Windows, which is what I did, and I could run the program Logisim on Windows. But actually for the M1, and this is another potential downside, is that you cannot boot camp into Windows. And this is definitely an issue to consider because if any of your classes require a Windows only program, then unfortunately you're kind of out of luck with this device. Also, side note, because you won't be able to boot camp into Windows, you obviously also wouldn't be able to play any PC only games on this device. Either. Okay, so what is the final verdict? Is this laptop a good choice for CompSci students or should you maybe wait or just get something else? I say that if the issues that I mentioned in this video aren't problematic for you, then yes, go for it. This laptop would be a fantastic choice. It is very fast, very powerful, very silent and also affordable too. This MacBook Air is definitely a huge improvement from the last generation MacBook Air. And honestly, I would say its performance is like pretty pro-like, like it's, it's not really Air-like anymore. It's pretty pro. <laughs> Hey guys, editing me here again, and before we end this video, I just want to give one last piece of recommendation. So if you are thinking about getting the M1 MacBook Air, then I highly, highly recommend at least making the upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM. I know the upgrade is a bit pricey, but trust me, it will be worth it because I have the one with only 8 gigs of RAM in it, and let me tell you guys, there have been so many times where I don't even have many applications open, like I have Google Chrome, maybe like Finder and something else opened, and I got hit with the no RAM left warning, and this has happened to me so many times, and it's really annoying when it happens. So if you are intending to use this laptop for school, then I strongly recommend making the upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM.
and I see that I am running out of space in my memory card. So let me just wrap up this video real quick. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel down below so that you won't miss any upcoming content from me. I plan on making more content about the M1 MacBook Air and also just about tech in general. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in another one of my videos. Bye!